Okay, so following on from last time, I've actually got some replacement sockets for this Commodore 64. This is the one that's got the black screen. It just boots and a black screen, but it does get through a dead, or it gets into a dead test and passes it, but won't actually boot. So it leaves me with the suspicion that it's one of these three ROMs that's gone, or it could be the PLA. But the main suspect at the moment is the kernel ROM. So because I've got the sockets now, first thing I'm going to do is take out the kernel ROM, socket it, and see if that fixes it. So I'm going to do that now. <laughs> So this is a known good kernel ROM and I'm going to shove this in here in my new socket. Let's see if that's made any difference. Right, so I haven't got the back bit cartridge in so let's just boot this and see what happens. And it's black. That is a shame. So it looks like this kernel ROM is not our problem. But how disappointing. It's still a black screen. So we've not really changed anything there. So unfortunately, we were blaming you, Mr. Colonel Ron, but it's not you. So that is not too bad at all. So that Colonel Ron is going to go back in. So the next possible suspect could be this basic Ron, which is getting a little bit warm. But I suspect that... So my suspicion now actually is the PLA. And seeing as the PLA is a massive point of failure for these things anyway, it is starting to look a little bit suspect. Now it's not getting super hot and I did check it with the oscilloscope and I couldn't find it like driving anything wrong but maybe I just didn't check all the pins enough. But I think the next suspect is going to be the PLA so I think that's the next thing to come out. <laughs> So I've taken the PLA out and I've put a new socket in. I'm going to pop this GAL PLA in, in its place. I know this works. So we get to see if this is actually going to fix anything. I'm not actually that confident this is going to fix anything, but you never know till you try. So there we go. So we've now replaced... Oh, actually, that's the original kernel ROM that's in there. And I've got a new PLA. So let's plug in the correct cable. Here we go. Oh, it's back. There we go. So it was a dodgy PLA. Wow. So this PLA was working enough to get through the dead test, but wasn't enough to actually start the computer up. That is really odd. So I wonder what was wrong. Maybe it's not selecting the kernel ROM in properly or something like that which I think wouldn't be required for the dead test to work. Ah, so there we go. So now that means, uh, now this is working. Let's see if I can run the diagnostic or the dead test again. Let me just try that now. I think it's two clicks on this to get it in there. 
I'm going to do it. Oh, there we go. So let's see what works. I'm expecting the RAM test to pass on this because it passed on the dead test. It could be broken though. Don't know. And I've got no SID. That's the only thing that's missing from this now. So what have we got? We cassette's bad because all that stuff's not plugged in the harness. Control port, serial port, user port are bad because the harness is not plugged in. It says the 6526 is bad because you need a keyboard adapter plugged in. And the 6581 is the SID and that's not in there. So this is working. Wow. Uh, let me plug a keyboard in. This keyboard's not very good, but it is working. Yeah. Right, so no sound, but looks like, well, the fire button worked just then. Yeah, this is totally working. This is awesome. So it just had a bad PLA. So the uh, thing about the bad kernel ROM was just a, a red herring. The kernel ROM was fine. It's probably not, the kernel ROM's probably not getting selected properly by the PLA. I think that's the problem. I kept looking at the basic ROM line when I was looking at on the oscilloscope. Um, I think the kernel ROM line was pulsing actually. I just don't know what's going on there. But either way, it's a prime candidate for failure and it's so important for the computer working that any one thing failing on that could just bring the whole computer down. I don't think I've ever heard of one that actually still lets the computer boot, but doesn't actually, well, still lets the dead test boot, but doesn't actually work properly. That's a bit of an oddity. So yeah, it's just had a very weird failure mode. Normally it's just like the computer's not gonna work, but yeah, so this computer is back. So I've got a fully working Commodore here, except it doesn't have a SID chip. Uh, and that would be the next thing I need. I think I want to get one of those modern replacements for it. So there it is, it's back to life. Uh, it was just this dodgy PLA. Uh, and that means that's quite, it's actually quite a good thing that it's the PLA because it can get one of these modern replacements. And then that other board is still just missing the exact same parts it was missing before. So I've just gained a fully working Commodore 64 here. That is absolutely fantastic. Um, and this thing, I might put this back in at some point and do some more investigation on it and find out why this thing couldn't boot the computer. What was it about this thing that it was doing badly? It must be there's something about selecting the kernel ROM. Like it's just not selecting the kernel ROM either at the right time or it's just not bringing it in. Maybe I just missed it. I'm sure I checked for that, but maybe I didn't. It would have helped me if I'd have known that because I could have gone and changed that PLA first. But there we go. So um, apart from a SID chip, that's another Commodore 64 back to life.